two very meta animated movies that don't just explore the hero, but that hero's entire canon and mythology. It's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse versus the Lego Batman movie. Batman will stop you? <laughs> he always stops you. No, he doesn't. What about that time with the two boats? This is better than the two boats. The Lego Batman movie has the return of Will Arnett as Batman, reprising his role from the Lego movie. Arnett is perfect for this incarnation of Batman. His deep, distinctive voice makes his comedy unique and works wonders for this Batman. I don't want to do that. I'm going to have a great time. No, 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 you no. You might meet some new people. No, 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 no. You even make some new friends. No, 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 no. No! Batman is a shut-in who is completely full of himself. He obviously has to learn to let people in and that he cannot do everything himself. Copy that. Oh, here's an idea. I could also- Oh, don't even finish that thought. See this counter? These are all the good ideas Batman has, and no one else has ever had any good ideas, so don't even try. Go play nice, all right? Shamik Moore, as Miles Morales, is a great character. He is similar to Peter Parker in that he is socially awkward, but he is also different. Peter is a science nerd, while Miles is an art nerd. He has a distinctive Spider-Man origin that follows the classic fairly closely, but different enough to work on its own. He is bitten by a spider that gives him powers. Here, it is strongly implied the spider is from an alternate dimension, since it's doing the dimension glitch thing that people from our dimensions do. In an attempt to figure out what happened to him, he retraces his steps to where he got the spider bite and finds Spider-Man fighting Green Goblin in front of an interdimensional collider. There, he witnesses the death of Spider-Man. He has to finish the mission that Spider-Man started and stop the collider from destroying the city. Unfortunately, he has no idea how to control his powers. The death of his uncle because of his inability to properly control his powers does not help him learn. Miles is a shy and awkward guy. A large part of this movie is about Miles having to gain confidence in himself. If he thinks he'll fail at being Spider-Man, he surely will. The goofy bit where his uncle Aaron teaches him how to introduce yourself to a girl by placing her hand on her shoulder and saying, hey, works well at the end, showing how much he has evolved. Hey. It's not just that he has to learn how to be Spider-Man, but he also has to learn how he is Spider-Man. Every Spider-Man we see in this movie is different. No single one knows how Miles will turn out, because Miles has to figure that out for himself. Aim with your hips! Look where you want it to hit! Square your shoulders! Don't forget to follow through! Don't shoot off your back foot! Let's kill me again! Then stop listening to me! Both movies have a lighter tone. Batman is a very simple character by design. He has a clear moral to learn and does so effectively. However, Miles has so much more going on. Spider-Verse has no problem bouncing between its naturally lighter tone and the dark elements of the story. Miles is much more relatable, and I know that feels unfair since how unrelatable Batman is, is part of the joke. If I were judging based on how effective each character was in their respective stories, it would be an incredibly close race. However, ties would defeat the purpose of this series. Miles is a much more complex and engaging protagonist. This is a point for Marvel. Anyone can wear the mask. You could wear the mask. If you didn't know that before, I hope you do now. The Spider-Verse has a bunch of villains, but our main antagonist is the Kingpin, as voiced by Liev Schreiber. He has a solid enough motivation. He built an interdimensional transport machine to bring his dead family back. This does bring up questions like how does he know the new family will be anything like his old family? Does he have any way to prevent his family from dying from being in the new dimension? I don't think my atoms are real jazzed about being in the wrong dimension. And if he has the ability to build a dimension hopping machine, what's to prevent the other kingpin to build one to get his family back and get revenge? I can put all that aside and say that he's all caught up in his emotions, though I do have to say his emotions are expensive. It's all pretty much an excuse to introduce the multiverse of spider people to help tell Miles' story story. Kingpin has enough to make his motivations understandable, if a bit impractical. In Lego Batman, we get Zach Galifianakis as the Joker. He isn't a great Joker by any stretch of the word, but he does manage to be better than what we got six months earlier. What the hell is that? 
He plays into Batman's need for connection in this movie. He is dedicated to proving he is Batman's arch nemesis. So when people ask you who's your number one bad guy, you say... Superman. Are you seriously saying that there is nothing, nothing special about our relationship? Both these villains are fairly weak since their main goal is to play off the hero in Joker's case or to create a multiverse to introduce our hero to others like him in Kingpin's case. In many ways, the Kingpin is more developed, but he is also more forced and his story doesn't connect to Miles in any meaningful way until very late in the movie. And even then, that connection doesn't seem to impact how Miles treats Kingpin. Between these two, there is more to Kingpin, but these are very much hero stories. What Kingpin does in this movie doesn't really have an impact on Miles at anything more than a bad guy versus good guy level until late in the game. Immediately, the Joker is part of Batman's arc and how he has to learn to accept people into his life, even if they are villains. It's weird, but the point has to go to DC here. What a crew, huh? And they all work for me. Who's the greatest villain of them all now, Batman? In Spider-Verse, we have Jake Johnson as Peter Parker, Haley Steinfeld as Gwen Stacy, Mahashala Ali as Uncle Aaron, Ryan Tyree Henry as Jefferson Davis, Lily Tomlin as Aunt May, John Mulaney as Spider-Ham, Kamiko Glenn as Penny Parker, and Nicolas Cage as Spider-Man Noir. The last three exist to be jokes. Granted, they are solid jokes. Where's that wind coming from? We're in a basement. Wherever I go, the wind follows. But there isn't anything more to them than that. Aunt May is barely worth mentioning. She helps Miles with his suit and web shooters and introduces him to the final three spider people. Gwen Stacy is really fairly baffling. She ends up time traveling to a week before the collider activates and going to school where Miles is because of her spider sense. It's weird, but it is just a setup to give her and Miles some time together and establish his developing crush on her. There isn't much more to her than the other three spider people. The rest are extraordinarily strong though. Jake Johnson does a fantastic job as the alternate universe Peter Parker, who has hit hard times and has become a has-been. He plays well off Miles. Miles is a weaker Spider-Man because he hasn't learned the ropes. Peter is a weaker Spider-Man because he's burnt out and has lost his way. They both have to find their path. One just needs to discover where the path is, while the other one just needs to get back on it. The story beat where Miles uses the lesson Peter told him on Peter is one of the highlights of the movie. You gotta go home, man. How do I know I'm not gonna mess it up again? And you won't. Uncle Aaron is similar yet very different to Uncle Ben. He is Miles' uncle who dies because of Miles, making Miles feel guilt for his death. Aaron is incredibly supportive of Miles and Miles trusts him. When Miles finds out about his powers, he immediately tries to contact Aaron for help, but he can't get a hold of him. He thinks about contacting his father, but chooses not to. However, the reason Miles can't get a hold of Aaron is because he is working for Kingpin. He is one of the Kingpin's enforcers assigned to track down and kill Miles. The kids out there. I'll find them. Miles has no control of his powers, and the Prowler has him dead to rights, and his only move is to reveal his identity. In that moment, Aaron redeems himself by choosing to protect Miles rather than kill him, and Kingpin murders Aaron for this. As for Miles' father, Jefferson Davis, I am baffled by the comic book writer that thought naming Miles' father after the Confederate president was a good idea. It's like naming a character Jim Crow. Still, he is very effective. He is clearly a father that cares only for his son's well-being and wants to give him the best life possible. However, because he forces Miles to do what he knows he should, Miles becomes resistant to his father's good intentions. Part of Miles' arc is figuring out that his father just wants what's best for him. In the end, Spireverse has only three really strong supporting characters, but they are crazy strong. In Lego Batman, we get Ray Fiennes as Alfred Pennyworth, Michael Sarah as Dick Grayson, and Rosario Dawson as Barbara Gordon. That's really about it. There are a lot more characters like Jenny Slate as Harley Quinn, Conan O'Brien as the Riddler, Doug Benson as Bane, Eddie Izzard as Voldemort, Patrick Swayze as Dalton, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, she is also Mary Jane in Spider-Verse, Seth Green as King Khan, Kate McCusey as Clayface, Jermaine Clement as Sauron, Mariah Carey as the Governor, Channing Tatum as Superman, Jonah Hill as Green Lantern, Billy D. Williams as Two-Face, and I can honestly keep going on, but they are all just cameos, so we end up with three real supporting characters, and they all hit the exact same note. Typically in story, your supporting characters represent some conflict for the hero. In Spider-Verse, Miles' is father and his uncle both want what's best for Miles. However, his father thinks that is going to school and studying while Aaron sees an advantage in pursuing his art. Miles ends up more in the middle of those two. There's nothing like that in Lego Batman. Everyone, even the Joker, seems to think Batman needs to open up more to those around him. They are all saying the same thing in different ways. They are all entertaining, but no real variation. 
So in the end, these movies only have three supporting characters with any real impact on the protagonist. The Spider-Verse uses those characters much more effectively. Point for Marvel. Disinfect the mask. Mm. You're going to want to use baby powder in the soup. You don't want any chafing, right? Anything else? Nope, that was everything. I think you're going to be a bad teacher. The Lego Batman movie is all about family and learning to let people into your life and trust others. What is interesting here is that this movie is can with every other film adaptation of Batman ever. I've seen you go through similar phases in 2016 and 2012 and 2008 and 2005 and 1997 and 1995 and 1992 and 1989 and that weird one in 1966. And yeah, if they said it was canon with all the cartoon versions too, I would believe that too. From a story standpoint, there isn't much to this movie. Everyone, including the Joker, feels that the Batman is shutting them out of his life because he is and has to spend the movie learning to let people in and trust them. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is about how anyone can be a hero. The movie states this by saying anyone could be Spider-Man, which does the job, but also muddles the message a bit, since you also need to be bitten by a spider that will give you superpowers to be Spider-Man. The overall premise and moral of the movie are solid. Some story beats are fairly weak, like Kingpin hitting Miles and staring at him dumbly as he slowly gets back up and defeats him. Kingpin could literally be doing almost anything else and won this conflict, but instead he just stares. No, no, no. I'm going to leave them alone. I'm just going to assume it all went to plan. What? I know it's just a moment, but it's really bothersome. Couldn't they give Kingpin some vision? of his family to distract him. Maybe Miles fell down when he was hit, and it takes Kingpin time to get to him. Something, anything has to be better than Kingpin just hovering him. Also, the tragedy of Penny Parker's robot being destroyed has no real impact. Can it not be rebuilt? Why is this being treated like the worst thing ever? Still, Spider-Verse shoots for a lot more than Lego Batman and pretty much nails everything it aimed for. Point for Marvel. I never thought I'd be able to do any of this stuff, but I can. I had to do some tinkering with this category this time around. I almost did something with Crimes of Grindelwald last time, but there was enough action for that movie to still work, and it won overall anyway. Here, Lego Batman is very much a comedy. While there is a lot of Lego versus Lego action, it is first and foremost a comedy, and treating it as an action film would be completely unfair. The Lego on Lego action is fun and worth noting, but the comedy in this movie is really good. Tonight is my greatest plan yet. And trust me, Batman's never gonna see it coming. Like that time with the parade and the Prince music. Hey, quiet! The movie understands its Batman history and embraces every moment of it, no matter how dark or how silly and hilarious it is at times. Spider-Verse has much better action than Lego Batman, but it has plenty of comedy too. I got a handle, buddy! Everything is fine! It would be fair to say most every incarnation of Spider-Man is canon in this movie as well, except through use of the multiverse. This gives us some solid comedy as well. Nicolas Cage's dark and gothic to the point of ridiculousness Spider-Man is fantastic. Sometimes I let matches burn down to my fingertips just to feel something, anything. Oh. You're so dark! Do you say you're not from the DC Universe? Spider-Man and his cartoon rules add quite a few fun moments as well. Like a the movie also plays for your expectations. The big spider bite is treated as a mild nuisance for Miles. Between the two, Spider-Verse is a better action movie, while Lego Batman is a better comedy. So that leaves the question of which is better, Spider-Verse's action or Lego Batman's comedy? The answer has to be Lego Batman's comedy. Point for DC. These pants are just a little tight. I don't know if I could throw a kick or jump in them. I got an idea. RIP! It's better. Now I'm free. Now I'm moving. I can only look you in the eyes right now. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is easily one of the most creatively animated movies ever. The style has a comic book look using dots to look like newsprint as well as comic book boxes to show thoughts the characters are having. I also like how Miles doesn't have this happen until he is bitten. Essentially, he doesn't get comic book panels until he is a superhero. The Lego Batman movie continues the tradition started by the Lego movie, having computer animation so good that it actually looks like real Legos. The idea being that these movies are nothing more than children playing with toys. It helps with the humor and the clearly crazy events that happen in this movie. Still, the creative edge has to go to Spider-Verse for bringing a comic book-like environment to the big screen for the first time. Point for Marvel. Step one, I infiltrate the lab. Two, find the head scientist computer. That lady with the bike is the head scientist. I saw her in this documentary at school. Cool. Step three, I re-examine my personal biases. Both movies have some fun sound design. Spider-Verse used some great cartoon effects with Spider-Ham. and anime-style sounds for Penny Parker. Ah! 
who technically isn't an anime character. They want each of the last three Spire people to have their own animation theme. In Lego Batman, the sounds of the Legos breaking, snapping together, and popping off reinforce the idea that these are just toys. The movies both have super generic scores. Daniel Pemberton does the score for Spireverse. while Lauren Ball does the score for Lego Batman. Everyone, start throwing me bricks. Right away, son. The four by six, come on, quick. Part of my research is that I let the soundtracks play on random while I write the script. It's all the songs from both movies. The score stuff from both these movies would flow one song to another, sometimes without me even noticing a track change. Though every once in a while, I would notice something stand out, and when it did, it was almost always something from Spider-Verse. Miles' main theme is fairly strong, as well as the Prowlers. I can't remember one score piece from Lego Batman. Both movies also use licensed music to differing effects. The songs Sunflower, St. Elmo's Fire, and What's Up Danger do a fantastic job of backing up the ideas and emotions of their respective scenes and elevating them. Lego Batman has some fun with music using I Just Died in Your Arms Tonight. Oh my God. Hi, Dad. I, I just died in your arms tonight. I was less impressed with Forever. No way! Hey, Orphan, look who's here. Overall, I like the sound design of Lego Batman slightly more, and the score of Spider-Verse slightly more. The licensed music pushed it over the edge. I love the song usage in Spider-Verse, and it amplifies the movie. The song usage in Lego Batman is sometimes fun, but rarely improves the movie on any significant level. Point for Marvel. And it's a no on the cape. These are two fantastic self-aware movies. Both Lord and Miller are key players in the creation of these universes. In many ways, these are also two movies that shouldn't work that do despite themselves. At this point, I would trust Lord and Miller with any property. The only reason I was originally interested in Solo, a Star Wars movie, was their involvement. They left and that movie was remade and ended up about as standard as you can get. A word I would never use to describe any of Lord and Miller's other work. What? I thought we had Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett? Yeah, I thought we had Kate Blanchett with the budget. I mean, carte blanche. That one. Hey, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And if you really love this video, consider visiting my Patreon page.